Welcome boys and girls to my third video about Legends of Runeterra and today I'm going to be going over the design philosophies that went into the game's progression system. So let's take a seat and let's get educated. So the de design philosophy for the game is covered in a really awesome video on Riot's YouTube page. I'll probably not going to do a breakdown of that but i will leave a link in the description below for you to take a look at it at your own leisure it's a good video love the design philosophies every time i hear about this game i'm more and more hyped for it so uh progression in card games the first section they go on to talk about the move from paper to digital uh really the history of collectible card games trading card games uh, really just card games in general and what I like about Riot and they did this we saw this with um, their League of Legends inspired board game Mechs vs Minions is that they really do put an insane amount of research into a genre that they're going to even consider dipping their toes into and it was really felt with Mechs vs Minions and the board game sphere what games they had played what what lessons they took from that as it was their first design and i really appreciate that approach so here we get into mad scientists in the wild west i love this paragraph i love it uh Let's start where every good game should the fun make no mistake we wouldn't be developing a card game if we didn't love the genre absolutely apparent despite the flaws and typical progression systems we still believe the most fun happens whenever you get new cards for that i totally agree the uh the psychology behind opening up a new pack and getting that shiny card is just undeniable so it's not just the thrill of seeing what you pulled, it's the possibility of what you can do with it. Even after you collect the cards for the perfect deck and master playing it against every matchup, odds are you'll seek another. That's 100% true as well. For those more familiar with League, it's a lot like when you decide to go all in on a main. Something draws us to beginning the process all over again, to the initial period of imagining and crafting a new strategy. And this is true too. Um... I saw this when I played Dota 2. I saw this when I played League. I would play a champion to death. I'm playing Paladin's Smite. Uh, definitely the same thing. Play someone to death. Max cap their progression. You fell in love with them. You still love them. You'll always love them. Now I want a new character. Let's try something cool. Uh, the best example of this happens right after a new release. There's a huge batch of new stuff you get to try. Everyone's developing their strategies in real time, figuring out how they fit into an evolving meta. Most of all, no one is completely sure of what works just yet. Anything goes in the post-expansion Wild West, and we're all in it together. I do, I do feel like that's less and less these days. Hearthstone is my best... Uh, case study for that i feel like that's less and less that it's a wild west so many cards are spoiled ahead of time in almost every card game that i feel like there's a meta that develops before before it's even released uh the best yeah so then they go on to talk about that in a perfect world, that moment of experimentation never ends. Just as the meta becomes predictable, something new appears and the surprises start all over again. Likewise, just as you're settling into a routine with a strategy you've mastered, a new card catches your eyes and you start dreaming up a totally different deck. I have to tell you guys, I do this uh, with physical card games as well. I'll have the perfect deck made and i'll play it my win rates off the charts i love it and i'll still feel the need to tinker with that sob i have no idea why maybe i'm crazy uh in our experience that's some of the best fun card games have to offer so that's the challenge we're choosing with legends of runeterra how to create a constant meaningful sense of progression and foster greater periods of experimentation and discovery now when they talk about no dead cards and a healthy meta and stuff, I see a lot of people making videos about how every champion in the game is going to be perfectly tweaked and balanced. And I got to tell you guys, that's a, f that's a fantasy. I, t I think that there are going to be, just like an actual league, there are going to be champion tiers. There are going to be champions that we see more in casual play than, say, in ranked play. Um, 
uh, or even in the expedition, the draft play. So I, I don't think everything's going to be like finely tuned. So it's just perfectly balanced. I think there's going to be the perfect amount of imbalance, just like League usually has. Uh, let's get technical. Okay. So here, here we're talking about the actual progression. Uh, to the extent that experience, we have to ensure you're still discovering new cards and reasons to experiment for a while after the latest release. Therein lies the problem. Let's say you have the option to unlock every card. In that total access scenario, you have tons of stuff to experiment with, but there's no more discovering new cards. You've got the whole set already. Now, interestingly enough, we've seen this in the physical card world with something Fantasy Flight trademarked uh, called the Living Card Game. And the living card game is no boosters, you're paying $40, here's a full set of cards, go ahead and build your decks. And yes, you see the strategic players sit down and love these games, but it doesn't appeal to the same market that a trading card game does. Because while a trading card game for someone like me, a collector, might cost $1,000 to get a full play set of this release, the average player playing at their kitchen table is going to spend a couple of bucks here and there getting some new cards and some new pickups. They're never going to want to collect a whole set. So it's also a lower barrier to entry. Uh, and this whole access scenario, while that sounds good in theory, I do feel like that would turn off a lot of people. Too much options uh, is definitely a higher barrier to entry and can turn off players um, <sighs> ironically by having access to all the cards the experimental time ends up being cut short even for players who might not have that access once some players have unlocked everything and figured out how it fits together the meta for everyone rapidly finds its final form and stays that way until something new comes along in theory we could counter this by releasing new cards non-stop in reality devs need to sleep at some point that's tongue-in-cheek humor i love when riot does it even if you don't care about the meta once you have everything unlocked there's not really progression anymore sure you'll probably have a blast in the first few days as you try everything out but no new cards to discover and nothing to look forward to the appeal fades fast you don't have a reason to keep coming back and likely won't until the next big release that is that is true as well and that was kind of my burn with hearthstone originally and now magic is just well, I, I ain't got time for daily quests all the time i don't want to feel guilty because i miss daily quests and i'm insane so yes i'll feel like oh why did i miss my dailies it's like having chores man on the other end of the progression spectrum, there's the classic card game scheme that was first made popular on paper make it all random but if total access was a dead end for our goal, this one is even more of a brick wall. Random packs as a model can be decent at ensuring you have new cards to discover. But it's better at delivering temporary spikes of excitement rather than constant progression. That's true as well. Assuming you can't instantly buy as many packs as you want, which is just a more complicated version of total access, getting cards at random has the opposite problem. The experimental time is increased as everyone works towards the full set one pack at a time but now you pers you personally are stuck with a limited arbitrary card pool that's true too um <clears throat> and that goes into the you know more money more problems you know if you're gonna buy a bunch of card packs you're gonna have access to cards that maybe other people won't have access to uh even in hearthstone we've seen this in the fact that i can afford to buy 80 packs maybe i don't need any of the cards but i should sure as hell can disenchant everything and then buy the card i do need and now i'm already at an advantage to people that haven't spent real world money uh, if you don't unlock cards that really get your imagination going it's better luck next time and if you're dropping cash for pack after pack it's basically pay and pray love that line that may be the standard most lucrative model but it's far from ideal as a way for players to progress and i love that mentality by the way uh this this is a good example when i was playing magic the gathering as a child not a child i was like 10 12 uh if if you all pulled boosters and you pulled you know red and black i'm primarily not touching those two colors as a player that really sucks all of your friends are pulling cards maybe some they'll use you're pulling all cards you're not going to use that's just rough uh comes down 
to this concept of agency. You need to have the ability to control your progression or the experience is more frustrating than fun. But giving unlimited agency, like getting everything immediately, the progression falls flat. There's nothing to discover and the meta stagnates. The challenge is finding the balance of controlled and random elements that add up to the right amount of agency. So you think about in two terms, uh, think about it in terms of two competing rates. The time it takes to build the deck you want, short equals good, and the time it takes for the meta to stop evolving, long equals good. Yes, definitely. The catch is that both rates are determined by exactly the same variable, how quickly you unlock cards. This problem is only compounded by two ways in which players can invest, time or money. If you can spend money to get cards and buy everything outright, that makes the time to deck zero. Great, but also time to meta much shorter. Not as great. Conversely, if you spend, if you only spend time to unlock cards, it makes for a much longer meta evolution, but also a much longer time to actually get the deck you want. That's the fundamental tension of making a card game. I I completely agree with that. I love the Heimdinger math here. Problem meets solution. So here we go. This is the stuff that, while none of it, I'm just going to point this out again. I I did this in my very first video. None of what they're posing here is groundbreaking or earth staggering news this is all stuff that we should have expected because it's smart stuff from other games pieced together into one beautiful recipe okay so we thought about this a lot we've come up with at least to start a four-part system for progression we think gives choices how you expand your collection strikes the right balance for agency and investment and most importantly supports the discovery and experimentation that make card games fun in the first place so let's start number one quests daily quests are another way to earn experience and give you something to do every time you log in don't worry you can hold up to three quests at a time since any experience you gain goes towards the vault and region rewards, quests are an easy way for every player to accelerate the reward. Knowing this, by the way, I'm just going to play every third day. Just kidding. But maybe. To the vault. All the fun of cracking packs without paying for them. On Vault Day, everyone gets an influx of new cards and a reason to hit the deck builder. It's a weekly opportunity to share your pulls and brew something new. Because Vault rewards are random, we can give you a bunch of cards and increase the number based on how much you've played the previous week. Players that spend a lot of time in Rune Terror will be rewarded with a leveled up Vault containing upgraded chests with more cards inside, not to mention a guaranteed champion at level 10 or above. Whoo, hot damn. I like that. You're rewarded for your time investment, not your financial investment. That's just smart. Uh, and it makes Riot look good, too, because they've got more concurrent players. Uh, region rewards. Here we go. This is the main way to expand your collection and get the staples you need for any deck you can imagine. You choose which region you unlock cards from, so you're not stuck building a deck with whatever you happen to get first. You can switch regions to chase other cards whenever you like, and soon you'll unlock a solid set of of options capable of supporting decks from every part of Terra. This is a great idea. The equivalent would be <laughs> Shadow Isles are black magic. I'm never going to bother with that. I don't care if I never unlock black cards. Now, of course, in here, I love characters in League from all the different regions. So, duh. Okay. Shards and wild cards. Again, not a ingeniously new idea. Get exactly what you want, no guessing required. Shards and wild cards can be used to directly unlock any card in the game, meaning the keystone cards for any deck you might want to build, like a certain champion, are always within reach. You'll get some shards and wild cards just by playing, but you can also buy additional ones in the store, which replenishes its stock weekly. While the Vault and Region rewards are geared more toward periods when you prefer to spend your money over, the Wildcard Stock store is designed for those scenarios when you'd rather invest your cash than ours. And it's interesting because it actually seems to be gated, uh, limited in the store for you personally. So you're not going to have that person from Hearthstone that was like, screw it, I'll just spend, you know, two grand and get a full playset right now. No, 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 sir. You're going to have to play the game a bit before you have that full set. Finally, there's one more thing to be aware of. Any chest or card you get, whether from the vault or region, has a chance to upgrade into something better. 
Altogether, we're optimistic about the potential of this system to do all the things we need it to do. Accelerate how fast you get your deck, slow down how soon the meta develops, uh, make getting cards feel good for all players. So no matter how you choose to invest in a game, there's always a reason to play. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, and then, da 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 da. Yes. So work in progress, and of course they punned it. Um, this, you know, this is really just an entire four paragraphs about not not reinventing the wheel, so to speak. Uh, they're just, like I said, picking and choosing some things that they've seen succeed in other games. Yeah, here you see three in stock, six in stock, six in stock. Go ahead and buy it. You can buy three champions. Uh, restock set in five days, four to so. Yeah, it seems like a weekly reset um, for that store. I love it. I love it. That makes a lot of sense. And you know what's weird is if you think about it, why are they doing that? It has to be for the betterment of the game. Why else would Riot tell you, no, please don't spend your money in our store for another five days? Um, on the other hand, it does also make it look like they have a steadier stream of cash rather than spikes coming in. So there, I guess there is a benefit, but it just seems, you know, you want people's money when you can get it. Um, and then of course, yeah, they talk about right here how immediately they're not saying this is set in stone. They're going to monitor how this goes and they'll make changes as they go. We've seen the league undergo so many changes since its inception that we would be stupid to assume that, yep, this is it upon release and that's the game. It's just fine the way it is. No, they're going to work to improve everything as they go. <sighs> yeah, I... I don't know. Uh, you know, I read these articles on Riot's site, and I want I want you to understand my perspective before we, we sign out of this video. My perspective is someone who said, I'm done. I'm not playing card games anymore. I'm not playing digital ones, and even most of my physical ones, gone. The only ones I'm getting now are either cooperative, can be played with, you know, friends here at the house, not competitively. I'm just, I'm out of it. With two small kids, I just don't have the kind of time I want to put into that sort of stuff. But this game is pulling me back in. Uh, that's how much I like some of the things that they've done to this game. And the same kind of goes for like, I didn't want to play any more Riot games. I just didn't. Um, I'm not a big fan of Tencent, the company. I love Riot, the company, but Tencent owns a large part. I was talking to Ben about this. I'm not a big fan of Tencent. I think they're kind of chumps about pretty much everything. But then I look at a game like this, and you know what? I'm just going to have to chalk it up to I'm supporting the people at Riot that I like because I, I can't pass on this. So... Legends of Runeterra, the progression is definitely taking a lot of cues from successes other games have had and then further iterating and improving on them. I want to know what you guys think, though, of the progression system in the comments section below. And, of course, if you enjoy these discussions about Legends of Runeterra, are looking forward to our streams and our coverage of the game as it comes out, please drop that subscribe, like, and hit that notification icon and of course as i said if you love this progression system if there's stuff in here that you don't like drop them in that comment section below i'd love to talk to you about them thank you guys so much for joining me i've been chris this has been the tiger's den you guys have been great